Hello, Howard Gardner. Very good to have a chance to speak with you. Uh, and I understand you've just taken a test which gave you some sense of what your own profile of intelligence is. And you may be wondering, if you have a young child, how can you get similar kind of information about the child? My own experience, I'm a father of four and a grandfather of two, is that a very good idea is to go with the child to something like a children's museum, a place with lots of different activities which the child can go to, things to play with, games of various sorts, things to explore, things to raise questions about, and just let the child wander and see what he or she is interested in, what they spend time with. In a sense, you're kind of like an anthropologist trying to understand um, a species which you used to think of in one way, but now you want to think of in lots of different ways in terms of how linguistic they are, how musical, how artistic, how much they're interpersonal, how much they're talking to you or talking to the particular object. The, the other thing that you could do is perhaps go with some adults who have more experience than you do with young people. For example, if you know somebody who's a teacher, that person might be better able to see what's special about your child than you if you only have one or two children yourself. And you'll notice I haven't recommended an expensive battery of tests, either that you should go out and buy or that you should um, take your child to, but just using your own wits of observation, talking to your child. And when a child is young, these are not fixed in sand, they can change. So if your child hasn't shown much interest in music, you shouldn't say, well, my child has no musical intelligence. You might sing with the child, play an instrument with the child, take them to um, see somebody who uh, is themselves musical, and then you can improve the child's musical intelligence. It's not at all fixed, particularly when the child is young. When you have a child, of course, you're going to be thinking a lot about school, and uh, that's entirely appropriate. And so you're going to be thinking about what sorts of skills the child needs to do well in school, and if they have the profile of intelligences which makes it easier, or whether it's more challenging. But of course, life is much more than school. Um, what young people do extracurricularly outside of school is often at least as important. I went to school, I was a good student, but probably the piano that I did for 10 years had at least as much impact on me as the particular classes that I had at school. And uh, often what parents do is to be supplement, that is to do things which aren't art focused on at school. So if the school does a lot of art, then you have much less of a need to do artistic things than if the school is focused very academically, in which case you should go to theater, you should have the child do role play, maybe uh, you know, set up a, uh, an easel where the child can do some painting, have the child maybe get an app where they can do some drawing or making some music. Um, and particularly during summer or holidays, um, much better than having a child just glued in front of a television or glued in front of a, an app and expose child to the things which of course are difficult to do in school where the teacher has many students and every time you take a school tour it's a very big deal. So you should think of yourself as a provider of experiences and of interpretations which reflect what you think is important, what the child thinks is interesting, but which isn't the focus of school. I've spent uh, 20 or 30 years thinking about how the theory of multiple intelligences can be useful in school. And I'm going to give you the benefit of that 20 or 30 years by giving you two words, individuation and pluralization. Individualization means know as much about each child as you can and try to teach children in ways in which each one can learn and each one can show you how he or she is learning. Now you're thinking, well, how can you possibly do that with 20 or 30 or even more children in the classroom? We live at the first time in human history where everybody can have an individualized education, and that's because we have so many smart devices, which whether they're phones or pads, which can deliver lessons, whether it's lessons in mathematics, in history, or in biology, in lots of different ways. And not only does that allow you to individualize, to reach a child in a way that he or she understands, but it also allows you to pluralize. Pluralize means teaching anything that's important in more than one way. Too often we say, I learned something in a certain way, that's how I have to teach the child. But I don't know anything important in the whole world 
which can only be taught in one way. You can teach things through stories, you can teach them through works of art, you can teach them through hands-on exploration, you can teach them through group dialogue, role play, you, know, you can teach them through keeping a diary, you can teach them through a logical analysis, through a scientific experiment, and if you can only teach in one way, that's your limitation. We need to figure out how to reach kids who come from different backgrounds, have different strengths, have different profiles of intelligences. And that's where individuation and pluralization become important. And I would even say those countries, those societies that figure out how to individualize and figure out how to pluralize are the ones that are going to be most successful in the 21st century. Now I'm going to try to give you some parental advice, somebody who is a father and grandfather myself, and that is there are two big risks as a parent, and I call them positive and negative narcissism. Positive narcissism is the one thing I could do was play the tuba or speak uh, Hebrew, so I'm going to make my child do that. Negative narcissism is the one thing I couldn't do was play the violin or couldn't learn Greek, I'm going to make my child do that. Because in both cases, you're projecting your own strength and your own weaknesses on your child. Sometimes our children are just like us. That makes it easier. But the way genetics works, that's not very likely. So the most important thing for parents is to step back and let our children show us by what they're interested in, what they're excited about, the kinds of questions they ask, what it is they want to do, and what it is they want to know more about. Now, if you happen to be very good at that, it's easier. If you're not so good, that's more of a challenge. But there are lots of things you can do. You can find classes or courses where there are other people who can teach the child. You can learn yourself. I've often had to learn things to keep up with my children. But even better, you can have your children explain or show things to you which they understand better than you. And nothing that makes a child feel more competent, more agentive, more like he or she can do something, if they can actually show you something and you can learn together. So, as you embark on something with your child, don't assume you know all the answers. Listen, watch, when you can be helpful, do so. When your child can be helpful, that's great, that's a gift. And if you both need help, find somebody else who um, can help you. Anyway, I've enjoyed speaking with you today. Of course, almost all people all over the world love France, and I'd rather be there, but that wasn't possible. But I hope that uh, what I've said has been of interest to you. I hope you've had fun looking at your own set of intelligences and that as you work with young people, whether they're your children, your grandchildren, or your students, that they will have fun with multiple intelligences. One of the greatest things about having developed this theory is that all over the world people tell me, you know, I never thought I was smart until I learned about multiple intelligences, and now I see all sorts of ways in which I'm smart, and that's good for me and it's good for the people who I live with.